so you were doing sexy content on Patreon. Yes. And I'm assuming just nude stuff. <laughs> okay. Cause yeah, at you, first, cause, at first, yes. Because Patreon did change where they were like, first yeah. you could put porn on there and then you could only put nude stuff on there. Yeah, they did. Uh, I I broke some rules back okay. then. I can say that. But it was mostly, yeah, because um, I started out just doing the nudes and stuff and that mm-hmm. was all Patreon, then you know, mm-hmm. the sexy nude stuff. And then I was like, well, girls, I want to, you know, try stuff with girls and, you know, okay. and do that. And then, so it was a progressive journey of like what, who I was as a, like a person who I was becoming in my sexuality and stuff. And my husband was with me every step of the way in this, Mm -hmm. you know, he was very supportive of everything. Um, And we, you know, it just eventually led to, you know, two men that I worked with in my content who were wonderful, Isaiah Maxwell and Danny Mountain. So, Mm. so I was very lucky to get real professional. Yeah. I mean, right at the beginning, because maybe if it hadn't have gone as well and I hadn't have had as much fun or mm-hmm. I wasn't as, you know, it was, I felt very safe and comfortable and confident and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I loved performing and I learned so much from them along the way. So I really was, you know, lucky with that. Yeah. So your first sex scene was with a girl. Yes. And, you know, we have a mutual friend, L Alexandra. Oh, yeah. She oh was, okay. She, back, go, go way back. Um, before I was doing any porn or anything, I was doing setups. I did International Kiss a Ginger Day with her. I was looking for somebody who I wanted to do a cute little. Yeah. It is a day. It's yeah. in January. Yeah. <laughs> but um, so I was doing all those kind of setups for special days and stuff. Right. But um, she, somebody knew her. I knew a producer that knew her and she was a fan of Boy Meets World. And so we did the setup. We did this cute pillow fights and a little kiss yeah. of ginger. By the end, we were like doing super nude stuff. And like Mm -hmm. we were getting like very hot and heavy in this stuff. And she was like, you know, you are going to do something in the adult business one day. And I was like, oh, I don't know. I think this is just fun. I was doing, you know, photos Mm -hmm. and stuff. But and then she was right. And I did bring her back to do, you know, a scene or two, a couple scenes. Wow. Yeah. And then I met people through her and I did some. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So then I started doing like group girl and then you know mm-hmm. kind of progressed like that and what was that wasn't your first time with a woman when you no 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 right? on screen I mean on yeah screen but not yeah. like in yeah. person yeah. no not with person no and that's something that's that was so great because I love women and and I've explored sexually with women and I finally felt like really accepted because every time like in my past I felt oh I have to hide like who I am sexually or mm-hmm. I was uncomfortable with that and I shouldn't have been. And actually, now that I'm so out in the open with everything, I'm finding that most people are really accepting and mm-hmm. really supportive just of me living in my truth. Mm-hmm. And so I think along the way, it was silly to hide so much of myself. Yeah. But yeah, so that was that was really fun to, you know, just explore that way. And yeah. Yeah. It's, it feels like a common thread that we've seen with so many child stars, especially that worked mm-hmm. with Disney, that they, you know. Yes, that's become true. Become like. That's true you know, in the public's eye, like these overly sexualized women because yes. they, you know, we always tried to cast them as this, you know, innocent person. Right. And um, do you think that that's going to change at all? Do you feel I like it's different now? I think it's different in other arenas. I don't know about Disney or Disney mm-hmm. Channel. I don't know if they're going to change really. But I do see more, um, you know, I do see people, more people living in their truth. And I think social media had a lot to do with that, that people could really connect and like you see these people on TikTok and everything who just tell their truths and people accept them and mm-hmm. and support them and I I feel that I feel that it is changing because I see so many younger people like in their twenties and thirties who are come up to me and women I'm always surprised with how many women come up and say I love your stuff I'm so like ha- you're, you're you're an inspiration for like really expressing your sexuality and being so like proud of what you do and who you are. Mm -hmm. And so I I think that philosophy is changing. It's the older set Mm -hmm. (laughs) who generally is more shocked by it. But, you know, I was, I was talking to somebody because in the day, back back in the day, they had to go into like back rooms to watch porn or get their dad's cassette or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. And so it was much more of a secretive thing. And I think these generations have really grown up on the internet and, having porn being so accepted. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's just a normal thing for them, which it is normal. But um, before it it felt even more taboo. 